Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is the Old Testament reading from Genesis chapter 4. After Adam and Eve sinned, God made a promise that he would send a Savior. God said to the devil, quote, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall crush your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Now we learn from this that the Savior will be human, born of a woman, what we know as the Virgin Mary. The Savior will also battle against the devil. In this battle, the Savior will be bruised, what we know as the crucifixion. But in the end, the Savior will crush or defeat the devil, what we know as the resurrection. In the Old Testament era, salvation was through faith in the Savior who was coming in the future. And so also for us in the New Testament era, salvation is through faith in Christ who already came. Well, Adam and Eve lay with each other, and Eve conceived and bore a son. They named him Cain, which means acquired. Eve said, I have acquired a man, namely the Lord. Eve thought that Cain was the promised Savior. Adam and Eve bore another son, and they named him Abel, which means vanity or meaningless. Perhaps Adam and Eve's mind, Cain was the savior, whereas Abel was just the younger brother. Was there favoritism in the family in which you grew up in? There are major differences between Cain and Abel. Cain worked the soil and Abel raised livestock. Cain was unrepentant, Abel was repentant. Cain tried to win favor with God through his work, but Abel won favor with God through faith in God's promises. Cain was full of pride. Abel was humble. The Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering, he he had no regard. Why? Why? Why did God have regard for Abel's offering, but not Cain's offering? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, says that Abel gave an offering through faith, while Cain did not. Abel gave an offering for the right reason, while Cain did not. Abel's offering showed that he was thankful to God, whereas Cain's offering did not. Abel's offering showed that he believed in the promise of a Savior, to send a Savior, whereas Cain's offering did not. Abel comes seeking refuge and mercy from God. Cain did not. In the end, Abel went home justified through faith in the coming Savior, while Cain did not. There are also many differences between the Pharisee and the tax collector mentioned in our Holy Gospel for today. The Pharisee was unrepentant. The tax collector was repentant. The Pharisee tried to win favor with God by his work, but the tax collector won favor with God through faith in God's promises. The Pharisee was full of pride But the tax collector humbled himself, confessing him to be a sinner. Why did God have regard for the tax collector, but not the Pharisee? The tax collector prayed with faith in a merciful God on account of the animal sacrifice that was just made in the temple, whereas the Pharisee did not. The tax collector believed in a merciful God, whereas the Pharisee did not. In the end, the tax collector went home justified, whereas um, the Pharisee did not. Now, God knows all things. He can look into your heart and see unbelief, 
pride, idolatry, lust, anger, jealousy, gossip, covetousness, and the list goes on and on. So for us to go through the motions of church and have no faith does us no good. None of us can fool God. None of us can justify ourselves before God. While Cain was more than just angry, the Hebrew text says that he was very hot. You could probably see the steam come out of his ears. He was angry toward God, and he was jealous of his brother. Cain's unbelief was evident in his anger. Now, God cared for Cain, and so he warned Cain of his sin. He told Cain that sin is crouching at his door. God cares about you, too, and so he warns us of sin. Sin desires to control you. It wants to be your master. It thirsts for your soul. It is like an evil demon. It is like a wild animal that wants to pounce on you. By God's grace, resist it by contrition, repentance, and forgiveness. It is as if God said to Cain, Cain, I've always been gracious and merciful to you. I am the one who has blessed your crops. And if you live a life of repentance, then salvation through faith in the promised Savior will continue to be yours. You will then want to do what is right. But if you let sin prevail, it will surely destroy you. I love you, Cain. Therefore, I am warning you against the sin which wants to overtake you. Now, Cain should have said, God, you are right. I am sorry for not regarding you as the only true God. I am sorry for making myself out to be an idol God. I need your help. I cannot master sin. It controls my thoughts and my actions. Please, for the sake of the promised Savior, forgive me and help me. Cain never prayed this prayer. And the prayer that Cain never prayed, the tax collector prayed. It is as if the tax collector said, God, I'm sorry for all my sin. Be merciful to me, a sinner. On account of the animal sacrifice that just took place in the temple, be propitiated toward me. Don't be angry at me, but forgive me. You see, the tax collector recognized his sin, and he was repentant, and he sought mercy from God. We also should pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, sin is crouching at my door. I cannot master it by myself. My thoughts and desires have been soiled with sin. I am sorry for all this and I ask for grace. I want to do better. On account of your son and the sacrifice he has made upon the cross, have mercy upon me. And he does. Your sin is forgiven because of the death and resurrection of Christ. God is gracious and merciful toward you because of Christ's atoning sacrifice upon the cross. Ephesians 1 verse 7 says, In Christ you have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Cain and the Pharisee, neglected to see their sin and to seek forgiveness from God. Woe to us if we neglect to confess our sin and seek forgiveness from God. Well, Cain planned ahead of time what he would do to his brother Abel. It is as if Cain said, hey, Abel, my brother, come out in the field. I want to show you some things. And Cain had Abel. Abel had no idea what was coming up. And suddenly Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. This is the first 
murder recorded in Scripture. I wonder went through what, what went through Adam and Eve's mind when they saw their son, Abel, dead. I also wonder whether they probably realize now that Cain is not the promised Savior. Cain broke the fifth commandment. What is the fifth commandment? You shall not murder. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. Abel's life had value because God created him in the image of God. Cain had no right to take Abel's life. Your life has value because God created you in the image of God. Your neighbor's life has value because God created you in his own image. You do not have the right to hit them, to abuse them, or to harm them physically or emotionally. Even the baby in the womb has value because God created the baby in his own image. May God give us the ability to speak out for those who cannot speak, to vote for God-fearing politicians who will protect the rights of all, both living and those in the womb. May God give us the ability to love and to care for our neighbor. By God's grace, may we not harbor anger or hatred in our hearts against our neighbor. By God's grace, may we treat our neighbor with kindness and compassion. Ephesians chapter 4 says, Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. In a way, Abel's death is like Christ's death because both shed blood, both were victims of jealousy from their own brother, but Christ's death was different than Abel's death because Christ's death was an atoning sacrifice for the sin of the whole world. Christ's death was a payment for your sin and mine. Jesus willingly went to the cross for our salvation, whereas Abel knew nothing of his oncoming death. Stanza four of the Latin hymn, Glory Be to Jesus, goes like this. Abel's blood for vengeance pleaded to the skies, but the blood of Jesus for our pardon cries. God knows exactly what happened, what Cain did to Abel. And so he asked Cain, where is your brother? And God is inviting Cain to confess his sin and to seek forgiveness. God wants Cain to repent, but, God, but Cain lied. He said, I don't know. I don't know where my brother is. <clears throat> and then he went on to say, am I my brother's keeper? Well, we would respond to Cain. Well, yes, you are, Cain. You are your brother's keeper. You are supposed to care for your brother. And so also, we are supposed to care for one another. We are our brother's keeper. We are to help our neighbor. We are to speak the truth in love towards them. We are to help those in need. We are to love the neighbor. We are supposed to pray even for our enemies so that they may be converted with faith in Christ. God made a promise to send a Savior, and God fulfilled that promise by sending His only begotten Son. Yes, Jesus was born of a woman, the Virgin Mary. Jesus was human like us, yet without sin. He came to be our brother. He came to pay for our sin. He came to rescue us from death. He came to defeat the devil by crushing his head. Unlike us poor sinners, Jesus was sinless. Sin did not rule over Jesus, but rather Jesus bore the sin of the whole world. He bore the sins of Adam and Eve, of Cain and Abel, of the Pharisee and the tax collector. He bore the sins of the extortioner, the unjust person, the adulterer, the murderer, the one you don't like. He bore all of your sins and mine. Like Abel, Jesus was a shepherd. Like Abel, Jesus was the obedient son, faithful and innocent. Like Abel, Jesus' blood soaked up into the ground. 
Cain's offering was rejected, but Jesus' atoning sacrifice on the cross was pleasing to our Heavenly Father. There on the cross, Jesus truly tithed all of himself, not 10%, but all of himself as a righteous sacrifice for our sin. Everyone who humbles himself will be exalted. Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death upon the cross. And therefore, God the Father exalted his son on the third day, and Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus was raised for our justification. Abel humbled himself. Abel went home to heaven justified. He was declared righteous through faith in the coming Savior. The tax collector humbled himself. He confessed his sin and trusted in the mercy of God. Therefore, he went home justified. He was declared righteous through faith in God's mercy. You humble humble yourself in confession. You trust in God's mercy through his Son. You are justified not because of righteous things you do, but because of the righteous work of Christ. You were baptized into the death and resurrection of Christ. You are a redeemed child of God with the blood of Christ. He gives you the, Jesus gives you the body and blood of Christ here at this altar. And he has opened heaven for you and all who believe. We respond to God's grace and mercy with thanksgiving and praise. Our tithe is, is done freely and joyfully. We are thankful for all that God has done for us. And this thankfulness shows forth in our lives with faith toward God and also with love toward the neighbor. Thanks be to God for giving us life and for sustaining our life. Thanks be to God for giving us saving faith in Christ. By God's grace, may God keep us faithful to him and to him alone. May God always keep us in repentance and faith in the forgiveness of sins. And may God continue to bless us with his gospel and sacrament, and may we be a blessing to others. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus in the life everlasting. Amen. Amen.